My name is Tim Sutinen from PrivacyProShop.com. A lot of privacy conscious people have heard about Linux and that they should get rid of Microsoft and Apple because both of them are integral parts of the surveillance state. For many people, that's not easy. It's almost like giving up a familiar security blanket that they have had for decades at home and at work. The first question often is, where do I even start? That's what I'll try to answer on this video. I'll answer common questions about Linux, share some of my experiences, and give my opinion on which version of Linux you should choose and where to buy your next Linux computer from. The target audience for this video is the average Joe who is not a techie and simply wants to use a computer for home or for business use. My history with Linux started back in 1997 with Red Hat Linux version 5. I own an IT support company and have been supporting Linux, Windows and Mac systems for 25 years. Why is Linux so good for privacy? Because Linux is free and open source software, Therefore, it's difficult to hide code that spies on you in Linux. Linux is a volunteer project, not owned by any entity, and therefore there is no single company behind it that could be bullied by government thugs into putting backdoors, spyware, or other nasty stuff that invades your privacy. This video is brought to you by Sutinen Consulting, my IT service company. If you have a business that needs a privacy-respecting and reliable IT managed services provider, or an MSP, please give me a call. Sutinen Consulting offers support for all of the IT your company needs, from cloud services, security, servers, PCs, all the way to voice over IP phone systems. We service customers all over the United States. If your company is located in Phoenix, Arizona, Spokane, Washington, or in Southwest Washington or Portland, Oregon area, we have on-site support too. Visit sutinen.com to request a quote or send me an email at sales at sutinen.com. Why are there so many versions of Linux? Because Linux is free software and anyone can make their own version with their own special nuances. For instance, Pop! OS Linux is based on Ubuntu Linux and Ubuntu in turn is based on Debian Linux. Is using a Linux computer difficult? No, it's just different from Mac and Windows. 25 years ago, using Linux was difficult. Since then, Linux has evolved into something that everyone can use regardless of the level of computer experience you have. My friend switched to Linux, got discouraged and went back to Microsoft. How can I avoid that? It does take some effort, so you need to have a commitment to privacy and not being spied upon. Apple, Google, and Microsoft prey on users who don't know or care about being under surveillance 24-7 and buy into the ease of use ecosystem that costs them their privacy. Also, this idea that with Linux, you're going back to the dark ages is just plain false. It's far from it. Linux in many ways is more advanced than Windows or Mac. If you're not tech savvy and don't have much money but have some time, you will likely have to search the web for solutions for the problems you encounter. But that's the same with Windows and Mac. If you don't have the time but have the money, you can buy a support contract from my company and we'll answer all of your questions and remotely support your Linux computer. What does Linux desktop look like? The default Pop! OS looks like this. You start apps by clicking on the listing of apps and then choosing the one you like or press the Windows key on the keyboard and a start menu shows up. Just start typing the name of the app you want, then press enter or click with the mouse. File Manager works pretty much the same way Windows File Explorer or Mac Finder does. You change the wallpaper by right clicking on the background. You print by pressing the print button in the app you're using. You change settings in the settings app. Really not all that different from Windows or Mac. How well does Linux work with printers and other peripherals? Very well in my experience. I have used HP, Dell, Lexmark and Brother laser printers and all-in-one printer copier scanners and most of them simply just print without having to do anything. Same with my Graphene OS phone. When I plug it in, it shows up in the file manager. Same with SD card readers, USB memory sticks, HDMI capture card, Bluetooth keyboards, mice, headsets and speakers, USB Wi-Fi adapters, and many more just work. Most devices work quite well, but verify compatibility before you buy a new peripheral. What about software support? Pretty much every web browser is available. Firefox, Brave, Chromium, Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge. 
For Office, you have LibreOffice, GIMP for photo editing, Thunderbird and Evolution for email, Signal, Session, Telegram, Skype, etc. for messaging, Microsoft Teams, Slack, Zoom, Dropbox, and many PDF viewers and editors. I edit these videos with DaVinci Resolve. Linux has decent software support, but not everything that's available for Windows or Mac is available on Linux, and many Linux apps are inferior compared to their cousins on the dark side. Microsoft Excel, for instance, is the tool of choice for power users, and migrating to something else quite often isn't viable. When you must run a Windows app, you can do it in a Windows virtual machine inside Linux, so you aren't left high and dry. Which version of Linux should I choose? My opinion is that you should get Ubuntu or Pop! OS, which is based on Ubuntu. Ubuntu Linux seems to be the standard everything else is compared to. Almost all Linux software supports Ubuntu, and when you buy a computer with Linux factory pre-installed, Ubuntu is by far the most common version offered. Pop! OS is a version of Ubuntu made by System76, which is a computer maker specializing on Linux computers. What's the difference between Pop! OS and Ubuntu? Not much. Their user interfaces look slightly different from each other. Under the hood, the biggest difference is the App Store, which is Snap on Ubuntu and Flatpak on Pop! OS. I like Flatpak better, but they do the same. Allow you to search, install, and update software on your computer. I run Pop! OS on my desktop computer and Ubuntu on my Dell XPS 13 laptop. When I have the choice, I'll take Pop! OS, but Ubuntu is excellent too. Both Ubuntu and Pop! OS are long-term support versions, which are supported for five years. I prefer stability. I really don't care if I have the latest whiz-bang, as long as my computer works consistently. Where do you buy a Linux computer? Number one, System76.com is probably your best bet. Every computer System76 makes is designed for Linux, and you can choose either Pop! OS or Ubuntu Linux. System76 designs their own open source firmware, which makes it unique from the closed hardware architectures of the major computer makers like Dell and Lenovo. Number two, Dell. I own a Dell XPS 13 with Ubuntu. The Dell laptop with Ubuntu has run flawlessly for over two years. Dell has integrated their firmware updater very nicely within the Ubuntu update system. The only annoyance I have had with it is its short battery life. Dell has exactly two models available as of today. A laptop, which is XPS 13 Plus, starting at $1,149. A desktop, a Precision 5860 starting at a cool $6,319. If you buy your computer from Dell or HP, you will get Ubuntu. Number three, Lenovo. I have used Lenovo ThinkPad laptops and really like them. Some people may not like that Lenovo is partially owned by the government of China, and who knows what spy code they have hidden in the firmware. Personally, I'm more concerned over the US government spying. Maybe someone who lives in Asia or Australia would be more concerned over Chinese spying. This underscores the importance of open source firmware. Closed code can hide all kinds of nasty surprises. It's much more difficult to mess with open source code. Lenovo allows you to choose between Ubuntu and Fedora Linux. I don't recommend Fedora because it's a cutting edge Linux where all new features are first introduced and tested. Also, Fedora is not an Ubuntu derivative and it does things somewhat differently from Ubuntu. Lenovo has two models available with Linux. A laptop, which is a ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 11 and it starts at $1,089.50. And a desktop, which is a ThinkStation P620, starting at $2,529.45. Number four, HP has two laptops you can configure with Ubuntu Linux. ZBook Fury 16, starting from $1,709.40. And another laptop, a ZBook Studio 16, starting from $1,786.80. All of the HP Z desktop workstations can be configured with Ubuntu Linux. HP has lots of options on the desktop front, and prices seem to be competitive too. For instance, a mini workstation starting from $922.90, a small form factor desktop starting from $689.70, 
and a tower workstation starting from $751.85. Finding Linux computers on Dell, HP, or Lenovo can be difficult, so I'll have the links to them in the description below. What about building your own computer or having a friend build one? Unless you are a techie, you should not do that. In my experience, self-built computers invariably have more problems than factory-built ones. If you still want to build your own computer, check out the one I built late last year. It's completely silent, a fanless system. Link to it is somewhere up here. And that's all she wrote. Do you have ideas or questions about Linux computers? Let me know in the comments below or send me a message on Session Messenger, the most private messaging system on the planet. My session username is Privacy Pro Shop. If you're interested in digital privacy, Linux, Graphene OS, Session Messenger, LokiNet, cryptocurrencies, and other open source software, check out some of the other videos on this channel. And as always, have a happy day.